Hello there. Today's video is some uh, spring and Easter farmhouse DIYs that I can't wait to share with you. I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots, and let's jump into our craft room. Okay, so our first DIY here, we have a piece of wall art from the Dollar Tree. It's one of the just little kitschy ones. I, I picked it up just because it was blue. I mean, I, I knew I wasn't going to use the graphic on it. It's a seahorse. <laughs> I live in the desert. <laughs> I don't do nautical, but I knew I'd use it for some sort of crafting project. So again, navigate to the framed art aisle and you will find all kinds of different sizes and shapes of goodies and stuff at the Dollar Tree. Now the frames aren't exactly 100% good quality per se, but we're going to paint it white so it doesn't matter. Now what I'll do is I'm going to use the, the canvas as a backing. So I'm going to tape this down to just a random piece of cardboard here that I use for just, you know, painting purposes. And we're going to paint everything white. So what I'm doing is I'm using up some of my old stash. Now I prefer DIY paints, but for this instance, I'm just trying to get rid of some of my old chalk paint. So just find a white chalk paint that, you know, that does you good, that, that treats you well, you know, tells you you're pretty, whatever we got to do, brings you pizza because you know, pizza's pizza. <laughs> So there's that saying like even bad pizza is still pizza <laughs> don't ask me why i think it's because i'm hungry so anyways yeah we haven't had lunch yet so moving forward we got everything painted a good co good couple coats of the white chalk paint now i'm going to use this folk art and i don't know why i distressed with this i think i was just digging through my paints and i had it on the counter or on my desk on my um my craft table here but i'm going to distress this with the the java color folk art paint so i'm just taking a rough brush a rough brush it's, it's not a stencil brush it's just a paint brush that i've used for some time that's just kind of been it's had a hard life but it's been very well loved we'll say it's very well loved and i'm just kind of messing this all kinds of and at first i got a little bit too heavy-handed in one spot so i decided just to kind of really go a lot harder in some areas here so it's very splotchy i kind of like the way it it almost looks like rust or like you know some sort of weathered type of rustish situation so it just kind of went a little bit heavier in some places and then you'll see me pick up a, d a decent amount more paint here on the top corner right out of the top of that lid there and then i'm just going to go really uh really heavy handed on it right here just to get some some bigger spots and then this is what it looks like i kind of like it i mean i kind of like everything i did but <laughs> i needed it to be distressed now and i should have probably just went for dark wax because i did that on the rest of my projects you'll see in this video it would match, but eh, not everything has to match. So now that we're done with all this, all good and dry, I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm going to glue the frame down to the canvas that I painted. And I'm going to take a very sharp um, razor blade and then just cut the excess canvas off. After that, I'm going to trim it up, make sure she's nice and neat and tidy. And then I'm going to get my staple gun and I'm going to restaple this to the side. It's got a little staple happy. It didn't need 27 staples, but hey, it has 27 staples. It ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, our base piece is done, so now we have what we call a reverse canvas. It's my favorite thing to do. And I want to take this cross here. I got this at Hobby Lobby some time ago. I was looking for a date on it so it would tell on me when I bought it, because a lot of that stuff there says, reminds you how long you've had it in your stash. Now, I've had this thing for a while, but in any event, I got it 50% off, so the, the cross itself is 250 It's pretty. It's got a nice, decent little metal um, decorative piece to it there. And I'm going to line it up on our canvas and I'm just going to find the middle and I'm going to apply some Spanish moss to the middle. Now this Spanish moss is a chartreuse color. I got it off of Amazon because I haven't been able to see or find that color at Hobby Lobby lately. It's been some time since I've seen Hobby Lobby have anything other than the darker, you know, the browns. And I love using this color for spring. So I ordered just a smaller bag from Amazon and I love it. So I will be ordering an even larger box of it next. And you can see that that will be linked in my description below. I have an Amazon shop so you can take a peek and look under project supplies should you want to take a, a gander at that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drape across some purple ribbon over the, the cross here. Um, normally this is done with fabric on a larger scale, but I wanted to do a, a, like a little mini piece, a little tabletop piece. So I'm taking the uh, royal purple ribbon here. It's a satin ribbon. You can get these at you know, just in the regular ribbon aisle at Michael's, I believe. I know Walmart sells them as well. This is a thicker satin ribbon. Um, and I just took two pieces so that I could try to get more of a fabric draped effect. I wanted it to look like that. So. What I'm doing here is I'm going to glue it and attach it to the back first, but I'm going to have to do a little bit of twisting and turning and you're, you'll see, should you choose to try to duplicate this particular 
project you'll see you'll, you can glue it down flat then you'll see here I twisted it right there I ended up twisting it to get the front or the shiny side of the ribbon to lay the way I want it to and I'm still trying to get it to lay across the top of the cross like it was a fabric draped across it so it is takes just a little bit of maneuvering a little bit of talking and you know, a little bit of coercing and then you'll eventually win you'll get your way you know domino and then you won <laughs> but it, this one wasn't that big of a struggle the, the satin ribbon is very easy to turn and twist and glue down responds very well to hot glue and then here I'm just tacking down these two pieces in the front so that they don't pop back up because again some of the ribbon was a little bit too short but I, I knew in my head what I wanted it to do and I, and I, I succeeded so tell me your thoughts on that do you have any other ideas or maybe do you have a different technique that you've used just to try to get ribbon to do as you say just do as I say not as I do you know what I'm saying now I'm going to take all types of various purple bushes and picks and things that I have in my stash and I'm just going to pick apart and clip off little buds and, and, and stems and things from all of these and I'm just going to nestle them into the Spanish moss. There's no need for any type of styrofoam because we're not actually going to use anything with any type of wire or pick on the end of it. We're just going to basically use the canvas and the Spanish moss and all of these little extra flower goodies to our advantage and we're just going to glue them all together and make them one happy family because like I said you have no choice but to make your family happily <laughs> none of us go in this like you get you can't you can't pick your friends you can't pick your family <laughs> there's also something horrible said about picking your nose but anyways like you can pick your nose but you can't pick your friends or you, or you can't pick your family but you can pick your friends or maybe you could pick anyway and that's gonna go somewhere that's just nasty so all right we're moving on so back to the pretty purple stuff that we're doing here again i'm just tucking all these in these are various bushes i've had from previous projects i've working off of them Hobby Lobby was a good spot. There's like two of these things that are in here from Hobby Lobby. One of them is from Michael's. And I just grabbed all different colors of various, ver different various colors of purple. No need to worry about some of them. There's also that argumentative purple color. Now my um, lights here in my craft room go between yellow and I don't know, hos hospitally white. And I don't, I don't get what's going on with that. So I still need to look at some, maybe some of the settings on my camera. Right now we've got more of a yellow tint or a warm tint to this but the colors are still coming out very pretty and I'm liking them very I like them a lot and some of the purples can look a little bit blue but if you're mixing enough of them together and I've got greenery and we've got other visual you know things that are going to draw your eye to them that um, not to worry if you think that the colors might be too big too much of a range but again if you don't like them then don't use them use something to your color palette that you would prefer this is specifically for Easter and around the time of Easter if you're familiar with that you'll know exactly what all this means now for the last part I almost forgot we're going to put our little hanger back on the back so in case you want to put this on the wall you can but I particularly seem to draw myself to shelf sitters or tabletop sitters so this also could be leaned up against the wall towards the top of a tier tray if you have one closer to a wall but again shelf sitter all the way or just something you'd put on your tabletop you could even lay it flat and kind of maybe diagonal off the side of a book or, or the, the corner of a, of a glass candle holder or something just to add interest or, or you know to a display you might have but I, I love how it looks and tell me your thoughts now our second project here is going to be just a cute little build a bunny <laughs> no build a bears but do build a bunny now I got this little pedestal to me I thought it was a candle holder but it says it's a pedestal I got this at Michael's a very long time ago but again you can find various things like such, such as these at like any kind of thrift store or even going to the stores and buying them brand new so this is a wood piece but I'm going to use some Waverly antique wax now in previous you know previous months you've learned that my new favorite is actually not a wax it's a stain and it's a folk art home decor stain the color walnut that is my favorite go-to I have a lot of this Waverly wax and I'm going to try to use as much as I possibly can to get rid of it out of my stash uh, but I quickly realized why this wasn't my favorite anymore it's very thick and very dark so I'm trying to use a spray bottle of water to kind of water this down to help move it as long as as well as a baby wipe and it just kind of still wasn't moving the way I wanted to so I decided to heavily distress this with some white chalk paint and again for today's DIYs I'm not using my DIY paint that I thoroughly love so much but I am going to try to just kind of get rid of some paints that I have now I decided to go very heavy-handed on this give it a very deep farmhouse distressed look and I'm just covering up most of that dark Waverly wax now once we're done this is what we got we've got a very 
um, I call it very sloppily painted. I like the very, I want to say chunky. Is it good to say chunky distress? <laughs> Maybe these aren't the best words today. I'm not sure. Today's an early off day for me, guys. Now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this metal bottle cap holder, the, this metal bottle cap, uh, this decorative piece I get at Dollar Tree, and with the beautiful work of some magic of E6000, because again we're going to be using metal on wood. Wood glue wouldn't actually work. Hot glue's not going to work on the metal and Starbond gives up after a certain amount of time for me so i decided to have patience and i put the e6000 on there and i got a little clamp happy i mean i went and got my big clamps out and this thing is so solid i mean e6000 has a smell i don't like the fact that you have to wait for a certain amount of time for it to start to cure but it's solid man I, there's no issues if you if you can do it and you have the time let it sit for at least a few hours and so now moving forward, we're going to take a piece of styrofoam and we're going to take this cute little mini yellow bunny from the Dollar Tree and we're going to make a little arrangement display out of it. So I took the bunny to tag off and I also took the little raffia um, ribbon they had around its neck and I'm going to replace the ribbon here with some ribbons that I've gotten from, yeah, oh, these are both from Michaels. These are just in the regular ribbon aisle. They have a whole bunch of little boxes of thinner ribbon. The green one is a, my favorite color green. It's a very leafy green and it's a grow grain ribbon. And that light, light lavender pur purple is a satin ribbon. And they're both about the same width. And I just decided to tie them together all around the neck. But then when I tied the bows, I tied the bows separately. So you can see a separate purple ribbon and a separate green ribbon and the bows aren't basically hiding within each other. So around the neck, you really only see the green, but when you get to the front here, you can see the purple, but then see the green around the side. And I love it. It's just simple. Change out the ribbon and you have a completely different piece. Now you can even just put that on your table right there, but we're going to be extra because I don't know how to not do that. And we're going to start off. So more chartreuse Spanish moss. I love this stuff. It's also very, it's still very moist. It's wherever this stuff is made and it comes from, it's not dried out at all. And I've had this for quite some time in the dry climate I live in, this stuff is still doing very, very well. I love this moss. It doesn't shed very much either, but I mean, moss, Spanish moss is going to no matter what. It's just something you accept when you use it. <laughs> now I'm going to turn our little bunny here into a pick. So I took a, um, a spare little, uh, what is this? This is a, a stick from a, from a floral pick I've saved. I cut the flowers off the top. So I'm using that. I'm going to put it in the bottom of the bunny. And then from there, I'm going to take the bunny and turn the bunny into a pick. And I'm going to put that into the top of the star foam. So now we have a cute little piece here where it looks like a bunny is sitting on top of a grassy hill. Now we are going to get floral happy. This is where my heart just soars. I love putting these things together. And I even love watching myself do it the second to third time around while I'm doing this voice recording. So I'm taking greenery first and then putting it around the base. Now, the two pieces I added first were from a previous bush that I probably, I think I got at either Walmart or Hobby Lobby. I believe this is Hobby Lobby. And then now the rest of these purple florals, these are from Hobby Lobby also. Now there was some green uh, eucalyptus that I put in there that I just recently got off of Amazon and I love it. It is a gorgeous look. It has a nice dusty uh, look to it almost. So it's very spring and I just, I can't get over it. I'll show you the bundle in the next DIY, in the next project we do, but you'll see. It is listed in my Amazon shop. It's a great price and you get a very good amount of it. So I'm going to take the rest of these purple bundles here. And I'm not sure what this is exactly called, but this is a bundle of flowers. Um, these flowers you can get from Hobby Lobby in many, many different colors. And I just basically cleared out the rest of my little stash there, which made me very happy. Building around the bunny, I went a little bit higher on one side than the other. It's hard to see that because we're looking down at a vertical arrangement. So I will from time to time stop and show you, at least I'll try. There's the bundle on the left. See, that's my Amazon bundle. And I love that eucalyptus. It is just absolutely gorgeous. I decided to add more, one towards the front, get a little bit more interest, and then look here. The, the lavender with the light greens, It this, this just screams spring and Easter. And it's just, you can tell like everything, the frost is melting and the weather's gonna be great for a little bit of time. And where I live, I, and I mean that a very little bit of time, I get about a week of, of spring and a week of fall. Then it's just plain hot or plain cold. That's just how Las Vegas is. <laughs> if you're not familiar, that's where I'm from. I live in the desert where I have to purchase my greenery and or stare in, at it in, in the online <laughs> or in movies. So, and then also you have great, you guys have great stories. You tell me all kinds of stuff about your weather. So I'm very, very jealous. So this is why I do this. I love these arrangements, but tell me what you think about this first little guy here. This is very, it still has a presence, but it's still kind of mini. Now we're going to make a bigger one. Now, some time back I made this 
little arrangement here, not arrangement, but these two pieces here. This is a Dollar Tree candlestick. And this other piece here on the top, that is a Dollar Tree bowl. Now Dollar Tree sold those bowls for quite some time and I bought maybe three or four of them. And I made this arrangement on one of my uh, YouTube lives uh, probably two or three or four years ago. And I'd made these in a previous video. So basically this is again, again with the patience, I just used E6000. I set it upside down, I put something heavy on top of the pedestal and I let it sit. And this has been sitting in the, on the floor in my craft room for that many years. So now it's time to use it. Now, what I did was wiped it all off because we got a little bit of dusty dirty and now I'm taking a piece of styrofoam and I'm manipulating it to make it fit in the curve of the bottom of the bowl. So I'm just pushing down pretty hard with my thumb and some pieces to get the corners to go away. I don't want to cut it per se because that would end up making it a little bit too small and I want the piece to stay as it is. So we have a combination of hot glue and E6000 and that E6000 will bond to the glass perfect in some time. Now I'm going to put the bottom in here. This is some spare pieces of jute cord that I have from a project that didn't turn out. It was a Valentine's project. I tried to wrap a heart and then I had to rage quit because it just was not working out and I ended up cutting all the jute off. I like the way this looks in a combination with some of that, that green uh, Spanish moss. It almost looks like there's almost a, a dirt underneath it because you can see through that clear glass. Now we're going to start putting all of our, our goodies in here. Now off to the side you saw me point and you can see here I have a glue skillet. I love using glue skillets when I'm doing floral arrangements. It takes time for it to warm back up, yes, but majority of the time it is so much easier and it's just a lot more fun, you could say, to use a glue skillet than instead of your glue, your glue gun. Now, look at this. I have a Dollar Tree Plus bunny. My first Dollar Tree Plus goodie, I've... When I went to Dollar Tree, oh, sometime back, I saw a couple things and they're seasonal and of course I lost all of my uh, normalities while I was in there. And I'm like, Dollar Tree Plus. It was, yeah, it was pretty bad. You know, people were looking at me, but I don't care. I was excited. And then I went to the front and I was asking, and so, so all these questions, literally 50,000 questions flew out of my mouth at one time. And the poor girl, the cashier was just like, what, uh, what, hello? I said, is it Dollar Tree Plus? Do you gonna get more? Do you have more? Do you know what, what color is the sky? Where do babies come from? What's your favorite color? It was really bad. I went really, really fast. <laughs> And so she said, she said, yes, we're going to get more and more seasonal items in. So at least for the start, my Dollar Tree, at least in my city, by my house, is going to start getting some Dollar Tree Plus goodies. So I'm so over the moon about that. And I literally couldn't stop talking. Got in the car, called my husband, talked just as fast. But you know, he's used to it, so he knew what I was saying. <laughs> so in any event, I removed the, the raffia. I added some buffalo check ribbon on there because that's farmhouse. It makes me happy. And then I had a little piece of the moss missing by the ear. That is like, oh, that'll be great. I'll put a flower on it. Well, it, it ended up in a spot that wasn't necessarily off to the side like you'd see, like, you know, the girly above the flower, above the ear flower. So I added another flower to the left and some other flowers there. So now we got a cute little purple flower girl. And of course, I'm going to add one more bud here to the bow because I can't just leave it alone. And I love how this little bunny is. We're going to do the same thing with this green guy that we did with our little yellow one. We're going to take an extra piece of a stem from a floral pick that we've used previously. And we're going to make the bunny into its own pick and push that down into the styrofoam that we put inside our bowl. And look, we got another little pedestal arrangement going with another pretty little bunny. Uh, these, these Easter. And again, this doesn't necessarily have to just be Easter. You could leave this out for all of spring with all these colors and all these different, I'd say almost said flavors. Please do not taste your florals. They do get them out of your mouth. Drop it. Do not put them in your mouth. I'm just saying all of these colors and all of these palettes, all this interesting stuff. I got here's some Michael's tulips. I got some yellow Michael's tulips in there. Um, there's little greenery bushes there off to the left are from Michael's also. I just added basically almost all of the, the primary colors I could find in my stash that would say spring. So we've got yellow, pink, two kinds of purples, a blue. We're going to put some berries in there. We got two different kinds of greenery. I love mixing greenery together just to make sure that you get some sort of interest. I do not know if any of this stuff actually grows at the same time of the year. I do not pay attention to that. Here's this baby's breath that I got from Amazon. I just decided to add some little white baby's breath in here. Again, these are little plastic buds on these baby's breath, but this Amazon baby's breath is such a good quality. Take a peek at my uh, shop in the link in the description below. It's pretty awesome. Should you want to take a peek at that, you can get some of the same goodies. Now, I'm going to add some more of it. Here is the up close. This is more of that Amazon eucalyptus that I bought. The stems that you get are perfect. And I'm just tucking them in 
to more areas where I felt I needed a little bit more thickness or a little bit more filler but this stuff is so pretty and the way it drapes the way it falls it is made out of a plastic or rubbery plastic but again these are all faux there's me showing you the stems I'm saving probably for the next go around when I have more arrangements that I'll need to make picks out of now I'm going to take these berries this is a berry pick from Joann's many many years ago wherever your goodies are I had to get the big gun out now see this wouldn't go in that stem would not go into the styrofoam so I'm going to turn it into a pick this is a pick machine now this is now a prison weapon I like to say it turns everything into a shiv and so I had to do this with all these because these stems were a little bit short and they would not go into the styrofoam so I turned them into picks with the pick machine if you don't have a pick machine you can purchase little wooden sticks with some little copper wire around them from the floral department and make your own picks out of them the pick machine is just a wonderful little addition and it makes things able to you know if they're not strong enough they can then become their own pick so that's why it's called a pick machine i love it for floral arrangements and then here's what we got we got just a wonderful little eclectic grouping of all these little flowers almost like a little garden wildflower just exploded and a little bunny sitting in the middle of it looking all cute i love this one tell me what you think about this one too again the container super easy you just glue two pieces of glass together and you're good to go so again just apply what you have here it doesn't have to be clear glass it doesn't have to be um, maybe you could use any type of candle holder a uh, pedestal candle holder or candlestick and then any kind of bowl and put those two together or you don't even need the pedestal part you can just put them in a bowl and put that on your table or on wherever you're needing the arrangement so again this very very the possibilities are endless and also super easy just make make your heart happy make your little crafty heart happy and just throw everything in there that makes you smile and when you're done you can't go wrong tell me what you think about this i love her she's so cute <laughs> Now we got another quick little fun one. So I'm gonna start this project with a sign from Dollar Tree. This is a Christmas sign that I got some time ago, obviously during Christmas, but I like the shape of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint the inside white. Now this took a couple coats and then it started to actually bubble up the paper. So I had to be careful and let it dry. So I had to practice some patience with this. And at first I was only going to paint the inside of the frame. And then of course I got too sloppy because I didn't tape anything down. I, I, should, I could have if I wanted to. So at this point, I was like, okay, Whitney, just, uh, let's just paint the inside of this and get our coats in there. And then what I decided to do also was I'm just going to sort of put a whitewash on the frame that way because I was getting paint all over it anyways. At this point, it was like the point of no return. So I was like, let's just, let's just rub paint all over the whole thing. So I was like, try to be nice and neat. And then that didn't work. Let's just, just, just rub the whole thing with paint. So I like it. I used a baby wipe and I kind of pull, pulled it off around the edges. So it gave the frame a little bit of a whitewash look. And this is what we got when we're done. We've got, that's probably three to four coats of paint in there too. Now, I am going to freehand what I consider to be a carrot <laughs> because I said, Whitney, this is, this is a, this is a fairly easy shape. You should not have a problem drawing this. So it's like, hmm, let me do a sort of ovally look with a point on one end. And then we'll see, cause I wanted it to be kind of a fat carrot at the top. And I knew I needed everything to come to a point. So this is me literally free, free handing. And I'm not looking at a carrot shape on my phone or online. I just am trying to see what my brain comes up with. And again, I need to really sharpen my Scooby-Doo pencil because that's my pencil I keep in my craft room that I hardly, I hardly ever use it. So I actually have to go sharpen that pencil because it's having some problems actually using it. Now I have a very rudimentary shape and I am not a very confident drawer and or painter, but again, this is something that's just putting down something as a base for us to use to build our project on top of. So this was one of those things where I was nervous that it looks really weird. Like here, we're done. What do you think? <laughs> let's put that up in your kitchen this is a, a carrot with no top on it it's great so look what i did guys i bought more buttons and you know me i love buttons so i did that with the the valentine's heart that i made and we all shared all of our button stories and our love of buttons well guys i bought a bunch of orange buttons because i can't say no and look how pretty they are when they're all just laying there together and i stuck my fingers in it I stuck my fingers in it so many times. <laughs> it's just so much fun to listen to them and to feel the buttons. So same as before, if you were with me and you saw my Valentine's video, we're going to do exactly the same technique. I'm going to take all these orange buttons 
and I'm going to just layer them together and I'm going to put them down in the space we need. That's why we painted underneath it so that we can have a good idea of the area we need to cover and stay within the same shape you want to stay with, right? You still want it to look and resemble a carrot. You can't get, you know, sidetracked and then you just look down and what'd you do? I just filled the whole thing in with buttons because it made me happy. And then also to get the glue strings off here, I use a little chip brush. Just one of my dry chip brushes took all the little strings off because let me tell you, with the buttons and the glue sticking, it, the, the, the glue comes through the buttonholes quite often. You burn your fingers from time to time. But um, in order to keep it a little neat and tidy, using a chip brush and just literally brushing it all off also gives you a chance to know if your buttons are adhered properly. I never had any of my buttons pop off. Hot glue is a perfect medium to use for the buttons. And we are just covering everything we painted. And then I'm just seeing here from time to time, you're gonna see me add some to the outside. Try to make the shape a little bit even and then now i'm going to start to layer them because we want some you know, some texture and some depth so i'm taking certain buttons and i'm just going to glue them to the tops and then this is what we have when we're done we have a nice little eclectic button look how cute it is so we went from a really horrible odd drawing and painting to a very cute little button button covered carrot i love it so i'm going to take this uh hanger this is from the dollar tree sign from the previous project we did and i'm just going to staple this to the back here and that way we have a way to hang her. And now this is a bundle I've used in previous projects. I'm just pulling these guys off here to use them as the tops of our of our carrot. And you'll see here, I just twisted these guys together like that. And we're gonna pull them, I mean, I twisted them together and then looped them all together. And I'm gonna glue them down to the top of the buttons up here. And I have to hold this down for a little bit. And then I quickly realized, well, I kind of sort of have a, a, a bit of a hot glue mess and uh how do i fix this so yeah there's my there's my amazon stuff i'm gonna use but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take my regular moss my regular spanish moss from hobby lobby this is the normal color that i get in the rest of the year and i'm just gonna cover the top of it now this was my way to hide the mess of little twisted cord wires and the um the hot glue so yes i know carrots don't have spanish moss on the top of them but mine does so in my world this is all crafty fantasy this is how it works it's all cute it's ribbons and buttons and bows oh my makes me happy <laughs> so i just took some um orange i think this is grogan or buffalo chick or plaid this is some orange ribbon from dollar tree i made a quick little double loop bundle bow tied it in the middle with some jute twine and now i'm going to take apart one of those amazon eucalyptuses and i'm just going to glue them little pieces in and around the bow just to add another piece of texture and yes Again, I know carrots have more of a longer leafy green, but it doesn't matter. Do what makes you happy because this made me so happy. And then well, one last step, I was going to say it was done, but I was like, let me distress it somehow. So I took my dark wax from DIY and look at the, look what it does to the buttons. I love this. This is where it took it to the next level. Like I have such a goofy grin on my face while I'm watching. I'm such a cheese ball when I see this. I love the way just a little bit of that wax goes a long way and I don't know if the studio lights are going to show you everything you need to see on it, but look at how wonderfully distressed this is. It puts just enough, I'd say, dirtiness. It's just dirty enough because it's been weathered. <laughs> it's just enough of a dirty farmhouse. I love it. I love the the um, the dark wax, the way it aged it, the way it made it look very weathered and, and, and dirt. Like, actually, I, if you used actual dirt on it, you know what I mean? I love it. Tell me what you think about our little button carrot. Very easy too. Very easy and fun. Now, this one here, this is our last project of the video, but it is a little, it's got many steps. So first step here, we're gonna start with this tag. This came in a two pack from Dollar Tree. I used the other one on a previous project, but I'm just going to do a distress coat of white on the back and then on the very front here where this black part is, we're going to paint this maybe a couple coats because we're going to put some DIY, um, not some DIY, we're going to decoupage some paper. So here's our tag after it's dry. And let me show you all of these gorgeous papers that I got from Lori at miltonstotter.com. All of these absolute precious Easter bunny papers are just amazing. So there's the first one. We got a, a bunny and a chick in a little teacup. Then here's a bigger one of a bunny in another teacup. And also another bunny in a double-handed teacup. It's so absolutely cute. Again, these are great for spring too. Here's some with uh, different bunnies in the outfits. And I love the fact that they've got like little furry arms and they're like wearing dresses and they're like looking like they're little portraits. It's very cute. That's a very good little theme. 
There's another couple bunny with two little bows, a pink and a blue bow. And then here's a little four pack. These are really good for tags as well. So you get four different uh, little sets here for bunnies. So of all of these, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy right here and I'm gonna decoupage this to the front of this tag. Now, my chosen medium is liquid patina from DIY. It's my new favorite, but you use whatever you want, whether you do a water and glue mixture or you use Mod Podge. This right here is where my heart lies with decoupage. DIY liquid patina, I have had absolutely no problems with it. No wrinkling, no bubbling, no nothing. So if you struggle with decoupage, take a peek at this. You can get this also from Lori at miltonstutter.com. There is a link in, a, in my description as well as a code for everything that applies. Now, some things might not apply for that code, but remember there is an incentive program that Lori does for repeat business and it is worth it. So take a peek, because some of these papers you're looking at maybe four or five, six dollars a paper. So you've got very, very inexpensive options. Now, once this is dry, this is what we're working with here. We got our, our, our little sides are crunchy. So we're gonna take a, this is my finger sander, but you can take any kind of sanding block and just kind of just roll your sandpaper across the edge in a downward motion or away from your project. So that way you're not pulling the project up towards you, you're pulling it away from the project. And then you'll see how easy and simple it is. You get a very clean line. It's very nice and tidy, so pretty. And basically just do that all across all the sides of your project. And when you're done, you have the cutest little tag. It looks like a little portrait because meant to it. I got a little skewer here and I poked the hole back through the top because we're gonna put some ribbon through there in a decorative way. It won't be used to hang it, but you'll see what I mean by decorative. And look at it, look at the perfect little thing and the paper is so pretty, it's so thin. It's a very nice paper. Now that's part of the project. Now, the base part of our project, we're gonna start here. First off, I have a wood round from Dollar Tree. It says hello on it. And then we have a styrofoam wreath from Dollar Tree. These are very common items. They usually have them year round. Now on the hello here, I've been very successful in the past getting the hello off of the wood. So I planned on doing that this time and saving it for another project. I've used these in other projects. If you've been with me, you've seen them before. So had a little mishap here. I popped that off. Boop. Okay. I broke the L. So let's okay, Whitney, we can glue that on. No, I broke the rest of it. So I gave up and said, okay, that's going to be the inside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some stain. This is uh, Antique Waverly Wax. Again, it's a little bit too dark for me, so I lightened it up with a baby wipe. And that's just the bottom of it. We'll set that to the side, and we're going to move on to our wreath. What I'm going to do with this one is I wanted it to look like concrete or stucco. So I'm going to add baking soda to some white chalk paint. And this took some time. And what eventually happened was I put too much baking soda in there. It's something I guess I've never done before. I've used sand before, but I've never used baking soda. And I wanted that very, uh, you know, st structured, uh, what do you call it? Like stucco-y or, or plaster type look. So this was a lot of baking soda. I also painted a few other projects you're gonna see in future videos because I've made way too much of this stuff. So as I'm applying it on, I'm like, this is great. This is the texture I want because I don't want you to know that that is styrofoam other than the fact that I'm telling you, hey, look what I did. This is the behind the scenes. But going forward, if someone sees the arrangement, I don't want you to just go, oh, that's a styrofoam wreath because you could see the seam on it. So here's the second coat. The second coat goes on even better, so you get more of it. Now you can dab at it if you want to put a texture into it, or you can use a you know a craft knife or a stick or a skewer or something to put a, a, a texture into it. I like the brush strokes of the chip brush, so I just left it as is. So I did do two coats to get a good thicker base to it, to get a good thick coat on it so it does look very stuccoy or, or plastery, almost like we're working with stone. And this is what she looks like when she's dry. Look at that. I love the... Um, Again, that's the, I'm showing you the bottom. We're gonna glue our piece to that. But the top of it here is very, very nice. Looks like stucco. So, happy enough, we're gonna glue our wood round that we stained to the bottom of this. I'm gonna clean up some of the edge that's squished out. And now I'm gonna put feet on it. I'm gonna use these tread wheels. They're, they have a hole, there's eight pieces in here. It says three eighths. I got this at uh, Hobby Lobby in their wood pile section. Again, this stuff was on sale, so I'm pretty sure I did not pay $6 for it. But at first I was only gonna put three feet on. And then I decided to go with all four. And what I did was I took the wheels and I glued them down in four equal spaces on each side. And then after that, what I did was I took the other set of wheels and I glued those on top to give it a higher base. Because at some point, when you just used one of them, it wasn't enough. It was only, it was barely a half an inch. So with the two down, very, very happy with how this looked out. Now I'm gonna distress it all with dark wax. Again, DIY dark wax, I get at miltonstotter.com. A lot of the, very little of this goes a long way. So at first I just started, 
out with very little and then I decided to put a bunch on one side. Then I went, okay, well, let me try to even that out on the other side to make it look weathered. Doesn't matter. Just kind of do something that looks very haphazard, very, you know, not caring, but caring, if that makes sense. And then I went after the wheels because I had, didn't stain them or paint them or anything. And then the, that dark wax took to those little wheels very, very well. And then I wiped some of it off. And then this is what our end piece looks like. This is our little holder, our little stand. And I love how it turned out. Now, there's a lot of steps to get here. But I think it was worth it. It was actually very fun. And that's what we're doing it for. I mean, and is, I mean not, is that why you're here? We are here to have fun. I go into my craft room to make me feel good. And making items and putting arrangements together literally makes my crafty heart happy. So tell me what you're doing in your craft room. Just sometimes I'm not specifically making anything for a specific purpose other than to make me happy. In this instance, I love making these videos. So when I go in there, I'm going in there with the purpose of making a video to show you what I've done. And then it gives me more excuse to say, hey, I'm not really in here wasting time. I'm making a video. I'm going to meet a lot of nice people. You all are going to leave me some wonderful comments and we're going to learn from each other. No, I filled the whole base in with little remnants and pieces of styrofoam that I've had from previous projects. And I wanted to keep it fairly flat. And then from here, I took more of my favorite springy green, chartreuse green Spanish moss that I got from Amazon and I filled in the bottom. We're gonna put our tag in here, but first with our bunny tag, I wanted to add some buffalo check ribbon to the top because I need to put my farmhouse happiness all over it. And I'm just basically looping, putting the two ends through the hole and then looping them over themselves to make a little cinch knot or a slip knot or I'm not sure exactly what that's called. I know one of you subscribers had told me what that was called in one of my previous videos and I'm sorry I don't remember it, but that's I love doing these types of things it's very easy it just gives some interest to the top of it now I'm going to use one of these craft sticks here and I put the craft stick in the arrangement and then I glued it diagonally to the back of our tag because I want the tag to have interest I want it to look a little different and look how cute that is oh, I'm sorry I'm losing my voice but look how cute it is I love the diagonal I love the, the crookedness just a little bit of depth of different just make it a little different make it a little weird now for these flowers here, I took the stems off and I took the leaves off. So I decided to glue the leaves to the stems because they weren't going to be part of the arrangement and I really wanted them to stay within our project. So on a few of them, I glued the leaves to the stem and now we're just going to put these little guys right into our arrangement. Now, my mother had these in her front yard at her house. I think she still does. And they go dormant and I live in the desert and we never technically quote unquote, take care of things. I'm making air quotes like you can see me right now. Anyways. <laughs> And they smell so good. So I'm thinking of these things and these remind me of, the, of them being in the yard at my mom's house when I was younger. And they just smell so good. And I'm just adding more stuff now just to finish it out. I thought I would have enough of the purple that it would add enough interest, but I absolutely couldn't just leave it that empty or that bare. So you are going to see the Spanish moss. So it looks like the bulbs are growing out of it. But then I added more, I added some tulips and then I grabbed this little bundle from Hobby Lobby and I added these, but only to the left side. I felt like being a little weird and say, what would I do if I only added it? So that one pick, sorry, I misspoke. I did add one small one right there on the right, but the left here is where you're going to see me add more of these picks. So you see, I'm, I'm pushing in these longer stems that I was only going to use these little bundled ones on. And then I decided to grab this one here that has more of the papery flowers on it. And I only put it on the left side of the, of the bunny tag. And it, I think it added just enough interest to that left side that it doesn't seem imbalanced. It just seems perfect and pretty like it was meant to be that way. I love it. Or like it, maybe it grew out of another seed that had dropped into the, again, me making up my crafting soap opera stories in my head about my, my projects. Maybe another seed dropped in there and then when it watered the spring, the spring rain brought the, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm going off into left field with my little stories here, but tell me what you think. I love this one so much. The happiness, the spring, the bunny, Again, you can leave this out longer than just for Easter. This is also good for many, many, many moons of spring. But tell me what you think about this girl. She's so cute. Now, that's it for today. Here's um, our five, five projects, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five projects in this thing. Now, this is the video is over 40 minutes. So thank you for being with me this long. If you've been here long enough, just say, hey, you know, do, you know it doesn't matter how long you've been here thank you for being here just say hello in the comments it's the fastest easiest way to support me it helps youtube know that you like me and will suggest me to more people and it helps me grow so just say hi in the comments i love the fact that you're here regardless and 
tell me what you think about these. All of these projects today made me so happy while I was working on them. I love the colors. I love it. This is like where I thrive with the greenery and the flowers and the florals. This is usually where my crafting heart lies. Now the buttons, so much fun, so cute. I love doing little small tabletop decor, shelf sitters, and this also was absolutely just so much fun to make. Even burning my fingers, it was still great. So, you know, hey, crafting is pain. What else are we gonna do? <laughs> That's why none of us have fingerprints, right? So, I have a coffee page. If you like what you see or if you learned something from me, consider dropping a donation there. There's a link in my description below, as well as you may see my uh, DIYs for, listed for sale there as I have a lot of clutter and I'm trying to get rid of them. So take a peek and help me out with that. And with all that said, you guys, you are my fuel. I, I love you more than I can possibly say in words. And I truly mean that. Thank you so much. Many hugs. Happy crafting. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.